What's the difference between an internally gated turbine housing and a free-floating non-waste gated turbine housing? Let's get into it. Today you're going to learn something. Welcome back. Another YouTube video for you. This is uh, on the topic of turbine housings again. Um, it's quite a lengthy topic and this is a second video addressing something totally different. Um, and what I want to basically do is talk to you about boost control, actuator spring pressure, wastegate spring pressure, the difference between an internally gated housing and a free floating turbine housing, non wastegated. So, what I'm basically going to do here today, this is just an intro to explain all the processes of what, we, what you're going to see, is we'll do a quick discussion. I'll show you the differences between free floating and internally gated housings. And then we're going to go down to the flow bench and I'm going to actually show you uh, a, a demo on spring rates with actuators. And I have a couple of actuators with different spring rates that I'm going to demonstrate to you. And we're going to talk about what kind of boost pressure you can expect from a certain spring rate actuator or a certain spring rate wastegate. What we have is free floating turbine housings. A free floating turbine housing is a turbine housing that does not have an internal swing valve. It doesn't have an internal wastegate. A integral or internally gated turbine housing does. This is what the two look like. Here we have two free floating turbine housings. One of the Turbo Direct stainless housings, you'll see on the inlet to the turbine housing, there is no swing valve, there is no wastegate outlet. So this is a free floating turbine housing, that is the correct term, and it requires boost control through a external wastegate. This is also a twin scroll version, which you've seen in our previous video. Also, there's no integral swing valve or integral wastegate control. This is controlled in a diesel engine via a fuel governor. Right, now what we've got is an internal or internally gated or integral wastegate. That is called a swing valve. This little piece over here is called the crank and that is your discharge port. Now, if you have a look at the inlet, you'll see my finger popping out of the side there. The inlet feed coming from your manifold into the turbine housing has a relief port on the side of it. Now, during operation, you'll have an actuator with a certain spring rate holding the swing valve via the crank down and closing the discharge port so that all of the energy entering the turbine housing will be fed and focused into the turbine wheel and the more energy you feed the turbine wheel the faster it rotates and the more boost it generates when you get to a certain boost pressure that the actuator spring rate that overcomes the actuator spring rate this crank will open the swing valve and the a lot of or a portion of the energy entering the turbine housing will escape out of the port. This then escapes out of the exhaust system and that is how you control boost. The cycles and the speed at which the swing valve operates will surprise you. Here's another housing that has an integral or internal wastegate attached with its actuator. That's basically how it works. Obviously the actuator arm will actuate in and out linearly and the, in, the gas is entering the inlet of the turbine housing as this valve opens will obviously discharge out of this port and out of the exhaust. This specific housing has got a divider here separating the gases coming out of the turbine housing from the exhaust flow. So we basically have three different actuators here. Two of these are Garrett, and this is a Chinese knockoff of who knows what. Now, most people will have a look at an actuator and they will pull on it. Yeah, that's about a one bar actuator. This one's, that's a bit softer. This is probably a 0.8 bar. And this one's even softer I and mean, you can pull it with two fingers. This is probably a half a bar actuator and they thumb suck. 
what I want to do is I want to talk to you about spring rates. I'm going to get go downstairs to the workshop now and I'm going to get the flow bench connected to each of these actuators and I'm going to show you what pressure these shafts crack at. Now I just want to talk to you about the theory surrounding actuator cracking or actuator, actuator spring rates and wastegate spring rates. If you have a one bar 14 psi, 14.7 psi spring inside of your actuator body, it does not mean that your car running on spring rate without any vacuum lines connected to it will produce one bar. That is determined, believe it or not, by the AR of your turbine housing. The smaller the AR, the higher the back pressure, the less your one bar spring rate actuator will actually open it. Or the sooner it will open it, the lower the boost setting will be that it will open it. The larger the AR, the lower the back pressure, the more you can expect to see, more boost pressure you can expect to see from the same 14.7 PSI spring rated actuator. Now, how does that work? That's impossible. It can't be. A lot of people have told me. And let me explain. During operation, while the swing valve is closed, and the engine is under load and is producing boost. There's pressure inside of the turbine housing. That's why on your Garrett or your Borg Warner catalogs, you'll have a P to C ratio, a pressure ratio for both the compressor stage and the turbine stage. There's pressure in this housing. Well, uh, have a look at the valve. The swing valve is situated inside of the gas path of the turbine housing. Now, if I am able to take my finger, like I showed you earlier, and push this valve open, if there's pressure in there, what do you think that pressure is pushing against? The valve. So the higher the pressure in the turbine housing, the less boost you will see. How do you change the pressure? Make the AR smaller, higher back pressure. Lower back pressure, bigger AR turbine housing. So let's go downstairs and let me show you a little bit more about cracking spring pressure on an actuator and what it actually means. Okay guys, so we're at the flow bench. What I want to do is I've got one of the actuators. This is one of the Garrett actuators. On the shaft itself has got a little disc, which it can obviously move up and down on the shaft. It's a dust protector. As soon as the actual rod starts to move, it's called cracking. So as it begins to move, we call that, we term that a, a, a crack, an actuator crack. So it cracks and it starts to move. That's when you are starting to find the equilibrium where the boost pressure inside of the turbine housing and or the pressure being fed into a pressure actuator has reached a point where it's about to now start to actuate the swing valve and open up the internal wastegate. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into a new calibration, pneumatic pressure, and I've got a little slider bar over here. Now, as I slide this bar, you'll actually see pressure over here. I'm going to pop this actuator. I've got to be careful. Um, as I slide, let's get this pressure out of here. As I slide this up and down, you'll actually see 0 0.79, 0 0.89, 0 0.99 of a bar. This is in bar and I've got full control. I can slide it up and down wherever I want and it'll give me the actual preset, in other words, what I've requested, and the actual current actuator pressure. Now, at the moment, I've requested 0.19 of a bar and I have 0.19 of a bar. I can go away, drink a coffee, come back, and if the diaphragm in this actuator is not leaking, I should still see the actual pressure as equal to the preset that I've requested. So. I'm going to zoom in onto this actuator because I'd like you to see at what pressure the spring starts to crack. Now normally what we do is we just put our finger on the body of the actuator and rest it on the shaft and adjust the slider bar at 0.01 of a bar increments until we feel the bar move, the actual rod move. Now it's difficult to see, it's much easier to feel. Okay guys, so what I'm going to do here is I know that this actuator is going to crack at approximately 0.55, round about there. So I'm just going to get 0.05 onto my preset. That's 1, 1. 0.04 is fine. Okay, you'll see the pressure will drop now. 
So I'm applying 0.04 and the pressure that the actuator is currently holding is 0.04. Now I'm going to go up at 0 0.1, 0 0.1 of a bar increments. And you will see on your screen, you can see the dial gauge is there. Forget about the fact that it's not showing zero, just watch the needle. Okay, we're on 0.14 and it's holding 0.13, it'll get to 0.14. 0.24, the actuator rod hasn't moved yet, 0.34, the actuator rod hasn't moved, look at the dial gauge, 0.44, still hasn't moved, now watch this, 0.54, as it climbs, see the dial gauge, started to move, that's exactly okay, now obviously the, the rod has jumped off the, uh, it's moved on the, on the actual pin, but at 0.54 of a bar, this specific actuator is cracking okay so we've got another actuator on here connected to the same dial gauge uh, obviously you'll see the dial gauge move as i touch this uh, just align them again so that they're on, on point and we are going to apply some pressure doesn't matter where the actual needle is sitting at the moment we just want to see when it starts to move so i'm now currently on point one point two point three 0.4, it's holding 0.4, 0.5, watch that needle, it should start to crack, there we go, 0.6 it started to crack, you can see the needle's moved, that's at exactly 0.6 of a bar. This is the actuator that you'll find on a GT2860 RS. Right, let's do the next one. Okay guys, so this is a bit of a different test, instead of using a dial indicator, I'm actually going to show you a turbine housing off one of the big cat machines with an actuator attached to the swing valve and i'm going to apply some pressure i know that this is quite a high pressure so we're going 0 0.7 we me go a bit higher than that 0 0.9 0 0.95 of a bar um, if you have a look at where uh, if you have a look at the actual swing valve just keep an eye on the crank area and you will see it will start to move when we get to approximately one and a half bar 1.1 it started to crack but you'll see it visually quite clearly now there you go i'm sure you can see that i'm going to go back one we're back down to let's go down to 1.34 watch carefully there you go you've actually seen it move i'll go up again up again up again and you can actually see the crank move i'm going to pull the pressure all the way down and you can see that the swing valve is closed so this specific actuator even though they look very similar will start to crack at approximately 1.45 1.48 of a bar the others are obviously got uh, much softer springs or much smaller springs inside okay guys i hope you guys enjoyed that i hope you guys learned something Here's two of the three actuators that we tested. This one here cracked at 0.54 of a bar. This one was 0.6 of a bar. GT2860 RS. And I'm not sure what this fits. I think it's a universal actuator. I believe it comes with a Perkins, but be that as it may. Will you see 0.54 of a bar boost using this turbocharger coupled to this actuator and 0.6 bar boost with the GT2860 RS? spring pressure alone without any vacuum line connected to it no you won't it all depends on what your turbine housing is the compression of the engine what sort of energy is coming out of the engine into the turbine housing what back pressure is inside of that turbine housing the more back pressure the lower the boost the less back pressure in the turbine housing the more boost you'll see so what i want to do in the next video just to wet your taste buds a little bit is we'll talk about wastegates and how they work. A lot of people out there don't actually know how a wastegate works. Yes, we understand that if you put pressure at the top of the gate, you're gonna close the valve, you should see a higher boost reading. If you put pressure below the gate, you're gonna get a lower boost reading. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about boost control, wastegate pressure versus lag. Yes, there is such a thing. And we'll go into how you can get more response out of calibrating a wastegate with spring pressures properly as opposed to just going and assuming that a certain spring pressure is the right pressure to use for the boost pressure you intend to run. Be that as it may, hope you guys enjoyed. Like, subscribe. If there's any questions, post them down below. See you next time.